Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to build a very simple yet ugly to do list solution called Taskmaster where you can add tasks, mark them as done, you can mark them as done when they are finished, you can delete them and we will also have a list of mm, done tasks at the bottom. The Taskmaster solution is not the main thing in this video, that is to deploy this to a live server on a solution called Circumio. Circumio is a free Django hosting service and when the project is deployed here you can do live changes to the project. For example if I find base.html, open up here, say changed, then you will see here in the log that this is restart auto saving, restarting. If I go back here now, refresh, you can see that this changed. Great. This is also using HTTPS. So it's a very cool solution that you can show to your friends and similar when you are testing or building a project. Before we start building, I just want to show you how you can create a new Django project on Circumio. Just log in, click create new project, specify a name, for example, Taskmaster or my blog. Project app name can be my blog. Then we just click submit. Then we'll wait a few moments. Then we have a Django project here. You can see the settings file already added. For example, the allowed hosts, which will not be done. You need to do this uh, manually later when you do uh, deploy from GitHub. Um, it's already connected to PostgreSQL database and stuff is already set up with static files. Down here you can see that the project is starting, so you just need to wait a few seconds for this to start. If you go in here now, you get a bad gateway because it's not ready yet. Um, now that you see Gun G Unicorn starting now, and this has come, you can go back and refresh, and then you can see here the installed, the installation is working successfully. Great. Um, if I go into urls.py, we can make a quick change here. Def index, pass in the request parameter, say return run um, HTTP re response, hello sir kumio.io, uh, return, to do, need to import this from django.http import HTTP response and path index and save automatically now. Yes, now it was saving and it's restarting. So if I go here now, refresh, we'll see this here. This is just a normal view in Django. I just did it very quickly in the URLs file to show you how quickly and good this solution is. Here in the requirements, you can see which things are installed. The Django, Psycho PG2, which is for PostgreSQL, and TZ data, which is for time zones. And by the way, if you continue this tutorial and add this to the requirements.txt file, when I didn't do it, I just added Django. If you add this one, you will not run into the same problem that I did. Anyways, here you can see the URL, and as long as you have this running, people can visit this URL and test it out. All changes to do here will be reflected automatically, and you can see them live after just a few seconds. Okay, let's jump into the other project and learn how to deploy using GitHub. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. Before I begin, I just want to say thanks to today's sponsor, which is Circumio, which is a Django deployment service. Circumio specializes in Django deployment, it makes it very easy to connect to PostgreSQL, uh, it makes it easy to set up salary, etc. You can try Circumio for free with a small server, or you can try the upgraded server, which is coming soon. So in today's video we're going to build a to-do list application and we're going to deploy it to Circumio and I will show you how to do that very easy. So be sure to check out Circumio.io. I will leave a link in the description below. 
So the first thing we need to do is to create a new folder for the project. Just want to go into my projects folder and then we can create one more here called mk there task master that sounded very corny but it will do for this project and then in here we need to set up a virtual environment for django and to do that we can run python python 3 sorry dash m vnv and then the name of the virtual environment which should be env in my case at least you can call it whatever you want and when this is created we can activate it by saying source bin activate and then you can see down here that the name of the environment is prepended before your username now that the environment is installed we can create a django project by saying now that the environment is created and activated we can install django by saying pip install django and hit enter and then this will now install 5 dash sorry 506 which is the current newest version of django which is available and a few dependencies that django has then done when and when that's finished we can create the django project by saying django dash admin start project and then just pass in task master then we can go into this and if I run ls now you can see that we have the manage.py and the main app folder. So we can create one more app here. Python manage.py start app um, task like that. So let's continue now by opening up this project in an editor. I like to use Visual Studio Code. So let me just find the project here. Project and do, 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 find Taskmaster there. And I can take this one. Open up. Save. No, this is just something old. Like that. So now we have the app, but Django doesn't know that we're going to use it. So we need to add it into the installed apps list. Um, here we can add task like that. Always add a comma since this is a list. And when that is done, we can continue by creating a database model for the projects, sorry, for the tasks. So here we can say class task pass in model dot model, which just comes from Django up here and makes it possible to extend the model class from Django. And then here we want the title field for the task, which should be a models.char field, which is something we use to store strings. Here we need to specify a max length and we can set this to 255. I also want all of the tasks to have a description. So description equals models.text field. And we can set this to blank equals true and null equals true because I do not want to have this required or mandatory when we fill in or create new tasks. Um, we need to know when the task was created. So created at equals models dot date time field auto now add equals true. And when this is true, uh, Django will automatically fill out now or a timestamp when we create this in the database. So we don't have to think more about this now. It will also be great to have a status field. For example, we can tick uh, or check it if it's done. So here we can say is done equals mal dot boolean field, which is either true or false. And then we can set the default value here to be false because we don't want to add tasks that's already done. So we can save this now and update the database. Python manage.py make migrations and Python manage.py migrate. Great, so now you can see that we got some initial uh, database tables, etc. that comes from Django. Great. Um, before we start 
building some sort of front end. I just want to log into the admin interface so that we can add a few tasks there. To do that, we need to create a super user. So Python manage uh, create super user. Hit enter, specify name. It can just be admin and admin at taskmaster.com. I do not own that domain. And then a password. Perfect. Now we can run the development server by saying python mentioned by run server. So this is then obviously only available locally. And if we go to slash admin, we can log in with the user we just created. Here you can see a list of the user we have, which should just be admin. We just created this and there are no groups, but we cannot see the tasks here yet. So we need to register this model in the admin.py file from dot models import task. And I can say just dot models because we are in the same folder as the file models.py. Then down here we can say admin.site.register and just pass in task, which is the model, and save. And if I go back and refresh, it appeared down here. Nice. We can create one task, for example, deploy task master to Sir Kumio. This is the description. And then I can hit save and create one more. For example, um, add project to GitHub and save. I can't see the title here, so this is pretty useless right now. But if I go to models.py, we can set up a string representation of this and say def underscore underscore str pass in self since this is a class. And then here we just say return self.title. Save and refresh. Then we can see the title of the tasks there. Much better. Okay, so. Now I want to proceed and build some sort of simple front end for this so that we can add tasks, set them to done and delete them as well. I want to use Tailwind CSS. So let's go to Google and just say search for Tailwind CSS, go into installation and use the play CDN since we're just testing out the stuff. So if we copy this, we can create a new folder for the templates. So templates, and then in here, one more folder called tasks, since it's good practice to have the, uh, the project folder in the templates folder as well. And then in here, we can say base.html and remove this and fix the indentation for this and this. And then down here, we can add one block, block content, and the block, and that makes it now possible to extend this file. In here, we can create one more called index.html, which will be the front page where we list out tasks. And then to extend the base.html, we say extends task slash base.html. And this task here is this folder. We could remove task there and this folder and just put base.html in this template folder, but that can be messy when you have more than one app. So let's close this and add the block content here. Testing and block and save. So now we can start to so now we have two templates to use. The next step will be to create a view for this. So inside of views.py in the task folder, we create a new view here, def index, pass in the request parameter, which is default from Django. And then we want to return and render the HTML. So return, render, pass in the request parameter, which makes it uh, available in the front end. And then we also want to pass in which template we're going to use, which is task slash index.html and save. 
and I like to keep things clean that's why I want to create a new file in here called urls.py so that all urls is connected to the tasks is in this file and not in the main urls.py file so um, here we can begin by importing path from Django so from django.urls import path and we want to import all of the views so we can just import this views file by saying um, from dot import views so now the index is very easily accessible here then we can set up the URL patterns list and say that when the path is empty we want to use views.index this is what we want to render and we can set the name for this to be oops, uh, can just be index and a comma at the end there last thing we need to do now for test this is to go to the main urls.py file just remove this one you can read this if you haven't done that before then below the admin you can say path and when the path is empty we want to go into this urls file and see if any of the paths are matching so now we just say include and say task.urls see here now we get a warning because include is not defined this is a function we get from django just like we import path we need to import include and then the warning is gone if i now go to 127001 colon 8000 oops forgot the http then you can see that i have done something wrong it looks like i have a tuple there too much so there where we are extending remove that save and replace um okay the tick should be there refresh so now we can see testing and if i go into inspect i should probably see the tailwind cs here because this comes from the base.html file we are extending here um, at the top of the page we can just create a very simple menu so nav and at the left side we can have a link to the front page so ahrf slash um, and as a task master and we can also add a main around this class p-6 just so that we get some spacing around all of the content and the navigation bar should also have something so add the class there and say p-6 on this as well uh, and we can give this a background color of bg teal 700 and then this will be hard to see because this is black so we can set this to text white and text xl so if i go back now and refresh you can see that this comes from base.html well this is coming from the index file perfect so then i want to list out all of the tasks here so we need to go into views.py to get all of the tasks so we can begin by importing the model we just created from dot models import task tasks equals task dot objects dot uh, filter is done equals false because we only want task that is not done and we can insert this here as a dictionary tasks and tasks now this variable contains this content and this variable will be available to be used in the template so instead of having testing there we can add div class space space dash y for so we have some space between each of the tasks and here we can say for task in tasks so for each of these oops and for so for each of the tasks we want to create one more box div class p4 so we have some spacing there and we can set the background color bg teal for example 400 so it's a little bit uh, brighter than the menu 
and at the top here we can show the title h2 class text xl and in here we say task.title below here we can add the paragraph and show the task.description save so if I go back now and refresh, you can see here this task, which has a description, and then we have this tasks, this task, sorry. And maybe we should have a link to view the full, the, the detail page for a task. Or maybe we don't need a detail page since we have the description here. So we should just have a delete and uh, a delete and mark as done button have them below here oops div class um, flex flex row items center just so that you can have these two buttons next to each other and uh, we don't have a page for this so we can just set the hrf to be empty for now set the class name py2 px6 pg teal 800 and text white so then we get the dark green color on the button, the text is white, and then here mark as done, and we can copy this, background here can be amber, so it's sort of reddish, and the button there can be delete. So refresh, then we just need some space in between these space y4 no sorry space x of course it's horizontal and space between the buttons and up to the description also so empty dash six margin top six perfect um then um, we can add one button up here which will lead to a create page we could have it here on the front page if we wanted to maybe we should just have a form at the top here and um, you can begin by creating the form for this so in this here we create a new file called forms.py so we do this very django-ish start by importing model form from django from django.forms import model form and we need to import the model, so from dot models import task class task form pass in model form and here we just need to configure this a little bit by adding a class meta set which model we are going to use model equals task and which fields from this model we are going to use and the fields we are going to use should be a tuple um, we are going to insert the title, the description, and is done. Is done. So we can change it if we want to. Then we just need to import this into views.py. From dot forms, import task form. Then we can make it available here uh, by saying form equals task form like that and pass it in here form form and save so now this form is available to be used in the template so we can render it there let's have it above here div and then in it we add a form tag form method should be set to post action can be the page we are on so just add a dot in there and in here we say form.sp so then Django will render this for us so if I refresh now you can see that there is the title field and we have the description field and the checkbox you can set the background color on this so it's a little bit easier to see pg teal 200 great and some spacing as well so p-4 like that um, and we should have some spacing down to the task so mb-6 margin bottom 6 okay next we need a button if not we can't 
submit this. So button class. And we can copy the styling from down here. Submit. Um, this still will not work. First of all, we need some space up there. Empty four. But if we try to submit this now, we will get an error because we have not set the CSRF token here. So append it here. CSRF underscore token. This stands for cross site request forgery, which now will make it impossible for other people to submit to this form. So you need to be on the correct domain name. So now we have a simple way of creating tasks. We just need to accept the data here in this view. So here we can check if the form has been submitted by saying if request dot, uh, f um, sorry, method equals post. Then we can create a new instance of the form and say task form and pass in request dot post. And Django will handle the rest there for us. If it's not a post request, then we know that it is a get request and it can just be like this. Then we just need to check if the form is valid by saying if form dot is valid. If it is, we can say form equal form dot save and it will be saved in the database. This will sort of just create something in the memory a little while. When this is done, I want to redirect us back to the front page. So we are back on a get request. So return redirect slash. Then I get a new warning here. Redirect is not defined. Let's import it here together with render. Both of these are shortcuts from Django. So refresh and test again now. Um, let's add one more here. Test. Submit and then we get the test down here. Maybe the newest tasks should be on top. We can change that in the models.py file by adding a class meta here as well. Ordering equals create a tuple and say minus created at. So that will just reverse this ordering. So now we have the newest tasks on top. Great. Um, so then we need to make it possible to mark a task as done and also to delete a task. We can begin by deleting tasks. So if you go back to view.py, views.py, def delete task, pass in the request parameter and the task ID so that we know which task to delete. Now we can get the task from the database by saying task equals task dot objects dot get primary key equals task underscore ID. So primary key is the ID of the object. Primary key and ID is the same thing here. Then we can just task dot delete and we can redirect this back to the front page. Save. If I refresh now, this will not work because we have not connected this button yet. But we can do that by saying a URL and we want to use a view called delete task, delete task and pass in task.id. If I refresh now, I will get an error because reverse for delete task is not found. Okay, so I didn't add it to the urls.py, that's why. So here I can say path delete underscore task. And at the beginning of the URL, I want to insert uh, an integer called task underscore ID. So when the URL begins with a number or an integer and with delete task, I want to use a view called views dot delete task name delete delete task. And this name here is what we are passing in here. And this task.id is what we get in there. This task ID is then used here, and we are using this to get it from the database. So if I refresh now, the warning is gone, and I should be able to click this. Actually, looks like the ID was missing. No, um, I just couldn't see it down there, but if I see it here, you can see. Yes, it was at the beginning of the URL, of course, but yes, 
that was not working. And last step then before we're going to head over to the deployment is to make it possible to mark as done. So def mark as done request and task underscore id. Then we get it the same way as we do here. And we can say task dot is done equals true task dot save. And again, just redirect us to the front page. Save. Um, then uh, do, 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 we need to add this to the URLs. So we can copy this. Mark as done. Use mark as done. And I want to have this in the URL as well. I we can just go back here and say URL mark is done task.id and save. So if I refresh now and set, let's just create one more task here, submit, mark is done, and then it's away from here, so removed from here, but it should still be in the database. You can see it here, but it's marked as done. That's why you don't see it on the front page yet. But this is something I want to fix on the live version that we have deployed, just so you can see how we're going to change a live project. So next step then is to add this project to GitHub. If you don't have an account on GitHub, you can create one for free. And when you have done that, you can create a new repository. So just click plus at the top here and new repository. Repository name taskmaster. Great, it should be public, at least for me. I do not need a readme, a git ignore or a license, so I can just click read uh, create repository. And then down here you can see the commands we are going to need. Let's copy this so we can create a simple readme file. Just stop the server, pass it in like that, git init. So then we have now initialized the empty git repository. We want to add everything we have so far. So git add dot. If I now say git status, you can see all the files that will be added to the repository. Commit, and I can just copy these four lines, paste and hit enter. Okay, so now I get the authentication failed. You would probably don't get this. It's just because that I'm on there's something weird with my users. So if I just say git push like that, then you can see that it almost worked. Sorry, I forgot to add push, git push. And then I need a username on github.com, which is in my case Steinover Hellset, and then a password. This is not the password you use to log into GitHub, but if you go to settings, scroll down and find the developer settings, go into personal access tokens and into tokens classic, and let's generate a new one. Generate new token classic. Testing. Expiration date can be um, for example, just no expiration and just tick this one. The rest here you do not need. At least not for this project. So I can just generate token and then I can see it here. Copy this and paste it here. So now everything was pushed to GitHub. And if I find the project here, refresh. You can see, I can see everything here. Great. Um, then we can head over to Circumio and log in. Um, if you don't have an account, you can click sign up. And you can log in with either GitHub or a Google account or a username. I can try to just use GitHub since I'm already logged in. And to do Circumio, you can see you create this, oh, access public data, so it will not access your private. Authorize. You are being redirected back. 
So down here, you can see that you can either create a Django project. So this will create a live project. You can import one from GitHub or you can upload a project. Um, you can sort of do whatever you want here. Now we're going to import one, the one that we uploaded to GitHub. And we can say taskmaster should be the project name. The GitHub repository URL, just copy this, paste, and we want to use the main branch name, which is, you can see here, um, update settings module, check this option to automatically update the project settings, yes, that can be ticked. We set the link to install the GitHub app. What is this? Import repository, yes, install. Yes, install. So that means that it looks like everything is ready now. Submit. We are updating, so just wait a little while. So now you can see here, everything was added here. So it's uploaded into Circumio. You can see all of the files here and make uh, changes to them if you want. You have access to a shell. You can set uh, variables for Postgres database or other things. You can visit settings where you can change here. Um, if you do a change here, do you want the application to restart? etc. So let's just go to logs, image builder, compressing and uploading to file system. And here we can see we get the warning now. This is sort of my fault because I forgot to add a requirement to txt. Um, let's try to see what happens or if just Django will be installed, could not import Django. Okay. Um, under settings, I think I should be able to sync this from GitHub again, yes. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code or the terminal. Let's take the terminal and say pip freeze. This will then show all of the packages that we have installed. We just installed this, but these are dependencies that Django has. So copy this and say, so just copy this, go back to Visual Studio Code and in the main folder where we have the readme and stuff, you can create one more file called requirements.txt, paste and save. Then we can say git status, you can see that we added this file, so git add, git commit, so we can commit this added requirements git push sorry i need to say sudo git push you do not need it hopefully and go back here now and if i now say update code it should pull the code from github again great yes now we have the requirements txt starting image build now there are no warnings if i try to open up this i will get the warning here that it's still under deployment that's okay now we see that the packages are being installed that's perfect okay i get a warning here now for some static files but we don't have any static files so it can just be like it is now but now it looks like this is ready. If I go back and refresh, I get an internal server error. No time zone found with the key UTC. Hmm. Okay, why is that the problem? Let me just copy this, paste it. Okay, let's go back here and try to install it. If I just copy this command. So let's try to install this tc data see if that and then here i can say 2024-1.1 save let's go back here again add commit and then the push command 
So let's try to pull the code one more time from GitHub. Okay, let's try to refresh. Okay, so now I get a different sort of error. That's okay because this is just a simple fix we need to add into settings.py because we need to add this into the allowed hosts list. So now you can see here it's auto saving and when that is done it restarted and everything should be okay so if I refresh now we should see the project here again. So we have now added this to github done we have deployed this to circumio done. So maybe at the bottom here we should have a list of all of the tasks that is done. So in views.py we can instead of doing this we can just say all so we get all of the tasks and then you can see this was restarting again. If I go back now, we should see all of them, but we do not know that these are done. So let's do a little change to the template. Open up, open up and find index.html. And then in here, we can say, if task dot is done, then we show this like that and just close it below here and if then we can make a complete copy of all of this here paste it below here and um, you can replace this if not this one then it will show there and then we have this at the bottom and then we can say h2 class uh, text Excel um, done. Now we have a list of done tasks at the bottom. Go back and refresh. Done. And if I create one more here now, submit. And uh, does not match any trusted origins. Okay, this is one more um, Django settings we need to change. Um, origin check in failed. Um, I always just forget this one. Trusted origins. Maybe that's the one. Let's copy that variable name. Go back to Circumio and into settings.py. Early equals, sorry. That was an origin. Like that. Everything is restarted. And then in here I can refresh. Let's try one more time. Submit. No. Um, CSRF. Doo -doo. It's very typical that I wanted to show this that I get this error. But it's not anything to do with Circumio. It's just my configuration that's wrong. Include Scheme and host. I have this here. There's that. Okay, I forgot to add HTTPS here. And yes, we have HTTPS because we use uh, Let's Encrypt on this Circumio solution. So you can see that here as well that we have the connection is secure. Perfect. Submit. And now this was possible to do again. Great. That's not the task, but anyway, I like it. So that's how you deploy a project from GitHub on Circumio. The problems I had had nothing to do with Circumio. It was just my configuration for this one and this one. I have not run into the problems we had at the beginning with the UTC, but as long as you just add TZ data in there before you deploy, you should have no problems here. Um, you usually don't know this URL before you have uh, uh, deployed the project, so you can just add it here later. If you decide to pull the code from GitHub again now, it will override. I know that the owners of Circumio are working on two-way synchronization, so that will come at some point. Anyways, Circumio looks like a great solution to host a free Django project. You can connect this to uh, custom domains as well 
and later we can also upgrade this to pro mode which will be uh, something that's online 24 7 the pro tier is four per month build through stripe and you also have access to postgresql database and similar if you need that anyways i hope you liked this video and if you did please hit like below if you want more content like this just add a comment below and i will answer as soon as i can and i will see you in the next video